Hi, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the author of What is WebSphere and the SCGA Certification Guide. Love it if you headed over to www.scga.com. Um, perhaps took some of my mock online exams and perhaps even clicked on a Google ad or two. It always helps when you support our site. I'm also the webmaster of pulpjava.com and mcnz.com, which has all sorts of great tutorials for you if you want to learn more about portlet programming, EJB development, all sorts of fun stuff. One of the things I wanted to do right now is actually just demonstrate how you can add more than one portlet to a portlet application. Um, I've got a single portlet here called Hello World, my Hello World portlet, and my basic portlet project. I'm going to create a new JSR168 portlet, and this is going to be a portal, portlet, there we go right there. It's going to be an empty JSR168 portlet. And of course it won't be empty because they got all sorts of garbage to it, but as empty as it gets. And what's the portlet name going to be? Well this is going to demonstrate the request response cycle. Um, this is going to be called the country snooper portlet. The display name will be, I don't know, country snooper country snooper and the description is snoops on a user's locale and the display name well the English display name will be country snooper and I don't know the English locale would be that sounds good to me and what package is going to be in is going to be com.examscam.portlet that all looks fine and dandy to me. And it's going to be called the Country Snooper Portlet. Okay, all looking good here. I click the next button, no additional modes. I'll click finish. And very shortly, I will have an empty portlet which is filled with all sorts of stuff like garbage comments that we don't want to use. And they also add in the process action method, which is, has to do with the processing phase of a portlet. I'm going to deal with that a little bit later. Right now, all I really want to do is just uh, send some text HTML to the client. So I'm going to change the content type. Um, but more specifically, what I want to do is I want to find out the preferred language of the user. And the way you do that is just say string language equals request dot get locale dot get display notice all these options here get display language so it'll sort of tell me the preferred language of the user and then I'm going to do some very non-discriminating printouts and I'm going to use the old copy and paste. Do this in three lines here. And I'm going to say we love people who speak. And then in here we're going to put the user's language, which we've already figured out. We've got that held in a variable there, their language, their preferred display language, which comes in from the browser. And then we'll finish this off, make it all look nice and pretty, end it with an exclamation mark. Um, we could even, I don't know, maybe even bold it, and then end the bold there. This should bold their language. Put a little bit of HTML inside of your code. You really shouldn't have too much HTML inside of a, kind of the, the controller of a port, the DV method, but this gives you a basic idea. And here we have a basic portlet that handles a request response cycle. So the request is passed into the method. The response is passed in as a render request, render response object. What does a portlet do? Well, it inspects the request object. So what's being requested? Are there any parameters, any text field that have been typed in or radio buttons been clicked? Maybe what's the language of the user, the device type? And based on information that comes in through the request, we send an appropriate response to the user. Now this is a pretty simple request response cycle that I'm handling here, but it emphasizes the idea that that's essentially what portlets do. They're view rendering components that respond 
to a request response cycle. I'm going to do control S, um, save all of my changes. I'm going to even take a look at the portlet.ml just for a moment here. And this is interesting because we now actually have several portlets inside of this portlet.xml file. So we've got the hello world portlet defined. And a little later, we also have the country snooper portlet defined. So that's fantastic. Okay, again, making sure that I save all my changes, I can now just right click, say run, run on server, the portal test environment. If I'd selected this button, it would have run automatically. But I'm not that impatient. I'll click finish. And in just a moment, we will see both of my portlets appear. So let me do that again. Run, run on server, click finish. And it looks like it hasn't picked up that change. And I do believe that the portal server just reads the portal.xml the very first time. So I'm just going to bounce this particular server, restart it, and then we'll actually see both of my portlets. Okay, and I've actually restarted my server, so you can see that it has finished starting and it is now started. And once I right click and say run, run on server one more time, you actually see the change. And that port of the .xml file, I believe, gets loaded the very first time a portlet gets loaded. But here we actually see two portlets that are part of the same portlet application. As a result, they end up in the same tab on the test environment. Hello World portlet, right there displays, and there's my country snooper as well. And in bold saying, we love people who speak English, which maps right back to the code that we wrote. So it figured out that my preferred display language was in fact English. Got that from the headers of the, the web browser, and then it printed that out in bold letters according to our very advanced HTML tags that we added in there. And that's about it. That shows you how to add a second portlet and handle a request response cycle inside of your portlets. Now, as I said, I am the webmaster of mcnz.com and scga.com. I would love it if you headed over to my website, clicked on a, a Google ad or two, um, perhaps even uh, picked up a couple of copies of What is WebSphere? Just charge them to your boss. Charge as many as you can. I'd appreciate it. I um, appreciate all the support I can get. Anyways, that's about it for now. Last thing I'm going to say is happy WebSphere.